Welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon for today's Lunch and Learn. Have a sit fit, smart tips for homebound workers. My name is Kathy Chern and I am a consumer health librarian at East Brunswick Public Library. Today's program is brought to you by Friedman Chiropractic and the Libraries Just for the Health of It initiative to promote community health and wellness. Our speaker today is Dr. Ken Friedman, Doctor of Chiropractic and Founder and Director of Friedman Chiropractic in East Brunswick. Please be aware that this talk is being recorded. Please keep your microphones muted and your webcams off. The recording will be available at ebpl.org slash YouTube. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. The doctor will answer questions at the end of the talk. The doctor presenting will not be able to offer personal health care advice to attendees during this program. And without further ado, I'll turn things over to Dr. Friedman. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule so that you could join Kathy and me today for Have a Sit Fit, Smart Tips for Homebound Workers. Who would have imagined that we would be in the position that we are now? Uh, since February the, and the pandemic was declared, so many of us have gone from working in the office, walking up and down steps and standing around at the water cooler and moving around desks and socializing with other workers to being homebound and sitting at the kitchen table or the dining room table or winding up on the sofa getting work done many times for longer hours than we did when we were actually in the office. So we created a webinar to be able to help people based upon the stresses that we're subjected to and the 41 years of clinical experience that I have helping people who are under stress and have physical and uh, other forms of complaints that can be related to it and giving them advice that they could use, practical advice that they could use on their own to be able to help resist the effects of that stress and uh, heal more quickly and more permanently. So I want to start out with a quote, and this quote comes from Roger Sperry, who's a PhD and a 1988 Nobel Prize winner for brain research. What Dr. Sperry said was, the more mechanically distorted a person is, the less energy is available for thinking, metabolism, and healing. Now, if you've ever tried rolling a bowling ball that wasn't perfectly round, or if you tried riding a bicycle with the front wheel bent, or swung a golf club that was bent and not perfectly straight, and uh, you, know, you saw the effects, you understand and appreciate how mechanical distortions affect performance. And the human body is no different. So we're going to be discussing a number of things today that will help your body function a lot more effectively. One of the most stressful positions on the human body, believe it or not, is sitting. In fact, uh, you know, we've seen books written now claiming that sitting is the new smoking and the effect that it has on your body. So we're going to be going into that in a little more depth. I'm gonna show you how to set up your workstation for peak productivity. Even if you're not at the office uh, and you don't have access to some of the uh, ergonomic furniture that many companies provide their staff, there are things that you could do to be able to tweak your workstation at home to be able to work smarter and not harder. I'll give you some basic tips to tolerate workday stress uh, on a physical, chemical, and emotional level. Uh, some home care for sore backs and stiff necks, what you can do by way of uh, first aid for yourself uh, until you can get in to see me. And then we're going to finish off with the importance of making time for wellness or else you're going to make time for illness. And then we'll be able to take some questions and answers at the end. So let's begin with sitting is the new smoking. Uh, if we look at figure 16 on the right of your screen, you can see how and this is an exaggerated version, but most people tend to sit like this compared to figure 17, which be the, would be the correct way of sitting. Let's talk for a few minutes about why sitting is so stressful and why proper posture in sitting is so important. Now, before we get into it, let's first talk about how the human body is set up. The brain, if we look at the spine, pictures of the spine on the left, the first view, figure 1.1, shows the brain and spinal cord, and then figure 1.2 shows the skull around the brain and then the vertebrae and the spine, which surround the spinal cord and protect it and allow for flexibility and movement. 
And then figure 1.3 to the right shows the connection of the nervous system to all parts of the body. If we were to turn that person sideways, you would see that the spine has three major curves, one going forward in the neck, another one going forward in the lower back, and one going backward in the mid back. The curves in the neck and lower back are developed over time. The curves in the neck, the curve in the neck begins from the third to the sixth month of life, it forms consistent with the time that a person holds their head up. The, per, the curve in the lower back develops from the ninth to the, ninth to the 18th month of life, which is consistent with the time that a baby begins to walk. Why are the curves of the spine there in the first place? Because the curve is the strongest architectural form. That's why in areas where there's a lot of snow, you see that the roofs are shaped like a dome because snow falls off of it. The head of the body is dome shaped because as the baby goes down the birth canal, it helps resist brain damage and brain trauma from the compressive forces, the compressive forces going through the birth canal as we're born. The dome is the strongest architectural form. And as a result, having a curve in the spine in the neck and the lower back helps to transfer the stress from the weight of the head to the shoulders and from the torso to the lower extremities. So why is all of this important? because when we're seated, the lower back has 50 to 75% more stress on it than it does when we're standing. So what that means is, is that when we're going out to eat, if you're going out to eat these days, when you go out to eat uh, and you're seeking, seated and having your meal, you're actually under a lot more stress than the person who's walking around and serving you. There's a lot more stress. And since we're home a lot and we're sitting at the table eating, we're sitting at the table working, we're sitting on the sofa being entertained with television or entertaining guests. We spend a lot of time these days sitting down. So it's important for us to know why it's important to sit correctly and be reminded that, you know, if, if you're going to be sitting to avoid doing something on a regular basis that could have detrimental effects, making some small changes can definitely improve your body's alignment and as a result, your overall health. Why? Well, that's because of the way that the spine is formed. If we look at this figure one on the left-hand side, if you look at the vertebrae in profile, there's a curve in the lower back, a curve in the mid back, and there's a curve in the neck as well. And when the head is held up over the shoulders and the, the shoulders, and hips are in alignment and the head is over the shoulders and hips, there's approximately 12 pounds of pressure being exerted. Now, what's that? What's 12 pounds of pressure? If you've gone bowling and you've held a bowling ball up in your hand, well, you'd hold it up closer to your body because we all know it's easier to hold. If you held that bowling ball out in front of you, it would be a lot harder and your muscles would strain a lot more. And eventually we'd have to drop our arm because we couldn't hold the bowling ball out there very long. But if we sit in correctly and our head carries forward just a little bit with our ear carried forward of the shoulders, that 12 pounds of pressure goes up to 32 pounds. And if we slouch even further, it goes up to 42 pounds, almost four times the amount of pressure. So if you're sitting on the job and you're sitting in correctly, or if you notice that your neck and shoulders are killing you and you don't understand why, even though you get massages, and you may even get chiropractic care. Well, this can be a contributing factor. Poor posture is a definitely a contributing factor. Not to mention the fact that every major nerve from the brain to the body is going through the neck and through the spine, and it's animating and controlling not only all the muscles and joints, but every organ and tissue and gland and system within your body. If I were to ask you to tell me what percentage of all the energy between the brain and the body is controlling muscles and joints. What percentage would you say? Well, most people say, well, about 10 or 20%, 30%. And that would seem to make sense because, you know, that's what we feel, but most people haven't reversed. It's, you know, they think 80% because we feel it, you know, uh, but in actuality, only 20% of the energy between the brain and the body is controlling muscles and joints. 
the other 80% of the energy going between the brain and body is controlling all of your organs, all of your glandular functions, and all of your systems. So why is that important if we're talking about sitting and musculoskeletal comfort and resistance to stress? Because we're dealing at a time now where our immune system's function couldn't be any more important, especially dealing with this pandemic. And anything that would interfere with our body's ability to be able to work as well as it possibly can would interfere with all of the functions of the body, not just the 20% that go to muscles and joints, but 100%, including the other 80% that's controlling your stomach and digestive functions, how you digest and break down the foods that you eat, you know, your overall resistance, your sugar metabolism, how your body eliminates toxins, and uh, your emotional condition, because the chemistry of the body is based upon how well all of the organs and glands and tissues and systems produce hormones and chemicals that mediate all of the processes, including how we think and function. So we know that the mind and body are intimately connected. And that's why your spine is that lifeline that controls and coordinates just about all of those functions. So by holding our head erect over the shoulders and by making a good curve in the lower back, we can almost guarantee that our spine is gonna be in the optimal alignment that will help facilitate better energy flow. So I'm gonna ask you to remember this rhyme, preserve the curve, especially when you're sitting. So if you look at me, if I slouch, what's gonna happen is my shoulders are gonna be carried forward and my head is going to go forward like that third guy in the image that had 42 pounds of pressure. And over time, at the end of the day, my neck and shoulders are going to be pretty sore. So if I make a curve in my lower back, that brings everything up into alignment. Now, if you go to sit up straight and you notice that's an uncomfortable position, it's probably because you're not used to sitting this way. And just the same way as going to the gym and working out or trying some other new physical activity, you know, go out and rake leaves. If you're not a landscaper, you might feel pretty good that day, but the next day you're gonna feel sore and beat up because you're using muscles that you're not accustomed to using. So go easy. You may decide that um, if you can't hold your spine in better alignment all of the time right away, it may be uncomfortable or your muscles may fatigue, build up to it. So start out with about five minutes. Just make an effort for five minutes each hour to sit up with a good curve in your lower back and your head up over your shoulders and then go to 10 minutes and 15 and so on until all of the time that you're seated, you're seated properly. And that's going to relieve a lot of pressure off of your back and neck and help your nervous system carry energy a lot better. Now, what happens in the spine is that if we look at the normal view of a spine viewed from the side, so if I were to extract a section of my spine and we were to look at the vertebrae, the bones of the spine are stacked on top of one another. I'll show you, these are the vertebrae right here. One, two, three, four, stacked on top. The spinal cord goes in th through the opening that's created by the way the vertebrae are stacked. And then these are the nerves that carry the energy from the brain down the spinal cord and then out in between the openings that are created by the way these vertebrae fit together. And as long as the spine is correctly aligned, that permits energy to flow and control and coordinate all body functions without interference to the process. But what's dangerous is when a condition called subluxation occurs. A subluxation is a condition where the energy traveling over the nervous system becomes interfered with. The nerve becomes irritated and it, it results in a neurological short circuit. When the vertebra misaligns, puts pressure on the disc and either the disc or the vertebra or the protective sheath-like covering around the nerves in the spinal cord irritate that nerve and interfere with that nerve's ability to carry energy. So whatever is connected to that nerve doesn't function correctly. So if that nerve goes to the muscles in your lower back, how can you possibly expect those muscles to be as strong and perform as well? And if you took a pill like a Tylenol or a Motrin or an Aleve or something even much stronger, 
Well, you might be able to not feel the pain, but the pain is still there. You're just not feeling it because of the, the cause of the problem not being corrected. If you ate right, or you exercised, or you got more rest, or did a lot of things that are part of a healthy lifestyle, it still doesn't correct or fix this problem. So as a chiropractor, I'm trained to identify whether or not the spine has these subluxations, and then if they're present, to locate exactly where they are, and then using a variety of different techniques from the traditional twisting and popping methods to methods that involve absolutely no twisting, popping, or cracking of the spinal joints, restoring the spine to normal alignment, to relieve the pressure off the nerves, and then improve the body's capacity to self-heal and function much better. But the most important thing is it improves the body's tolerance to the physical and chemical and emotional stresses that we're subjected to on a daily basis. So the care that I offer is improves the body's ability to function better, and the suggestions that I'm going to be giving you in the balance of this webinar will help improve your body's ability to tolerate those stresses better also. So since we're spending a lot of time sitting at workstations, here are some things that you could do. Let's first look at what you shouldn't do. And I showed you how I slouched and what happened. First of all, I lost the curve in my lower back, okay? So it rounded instead of being curved in the proper direction going forward as it is here in this middle view. And then by slouching, my head is carried forward of my shoulders. So now I don't have 12 pounds of pressure that I'm sustaining. I've got 42 or more pounds of pressure on my shoulders. My workstation is not really set up ergonomically correct. Look at the screen. The screen is too low. We want the screen much higher up. As a general rule of thumb, you want the top third of the screen at eye level. That way it facilitates having your head up over your shoulders. If the screen is down, your head is gonna be carried forward. It won't be at eye level. And consequently, it, it fosters craning your head forward and more stress on the neck and shoulders, as well as the lower back. If you look at the positioning of my shoulder to elbow and elbow to wrist, it's not at a proper angle. We want about a 60 to 80 degree angle here and the wrist straight. So this way you're not in compressing and irritating the nerves going from the neck into the arm and then into the forearm through the wrist, the carpal tunnel, and then into the hands. So this will prevent numbness and tingling, weakness in the hands or in the legs and feet uh, from the hips and ankle and foot going out of alignment as well. Uh, you want the desk at the correct height, not too high, not too low, all right? And if you have a phone at your workstation, you wanna place the phone on the opposite side of handedness. So, I'm sorry, you're gonna put the phone, on, yes, on the opposite side of handedness. So in other words, if you're a right-handed person, if you write with your right hand, you want the phone on the left side. So this way you could pick up the phone with your left hand and write with your right hand. Do not wedge the phone between your ear and your shoulder and then write. Hold the phone in your hand and if necessary, you can use your elbow to secure the paper to the surface and you can write that way without having to strain your neck to one side and compress the nerves and have problems. A lot of people are using a sit-stand desk uh, I have a sit-stand desk in my office. It's not good to stand the whole time. It's not really good to sit the whole time. It's great to be able to mix it up and go from standing to sitting. And the same rules would apply while you're standing. See if you can get it set up so that you can have your elbow and wrist in optimal alignment. Get the height of the screen high enough so that you can keep your head up over your shoulders. And if you're using a chair at home, try to set up the chair so that you have the support right in the middle of your lower back and then going up to the mid back, okay? Have a nice long seat pan so that you, your butt can go all the way into the back of the seat, not scooted forward this way. You want your back of your chair supporting you. The only way this would 
uh, still work without being all the way back in your chair is if you were sitting with a good curve in your lower back. Now, these, these Swedish ball chairs uh, that are, are on the market almost force you to have a good curve in your lower back and they don't have a back on it. So they work very well for people. But these are some rules of thumb to set up your workstation so it's correct. Now, if you don't have an, er an ergonomic chair like this, what you could do is you could roll a towel, fold a towel so it's about six inches wide and put a couple of rubber bands around each side and you could put it behind your chair so it supports the curve in your lower back, sit all the way back into it or practice again on that corrective exercise by sitting up with a good curve in your lower back and build up the amount of time. So uh, you're sitting uh, correctly at all times. Another thing that you could do that's not in this image but is also a nice thing to do is you could put a box or something underneath your workstation. So you, you could put one foot up or another foot up or when you're standing, put one foot up on the box and alternate feet from one side to the other to help relieve some strain on the hip. Well, there are a number of things in addition that you could do to help tolerate some of the stresses that you're under during the workday. You know, I think that, you know, aside from having your spine checked periodically by a chiropractor to make sure that everything's functioning at its best, so your body resists the stresses that you're under on a regular basis, I want you to listen to your body, okay? Pain is a sensation that a healthy body uses to protect itself. So beware of drugs that treat pain. If you're taking muscle relaxants and anti-inflammatories and painkillers, aside from hurting your stomach, liver, and kidneys, you're gonna temporarily block your body's ability to feel the pain and protect your movements. So it renders you more susceptible to further injury. It'll interfere with the healing process and it'll postpone proper treatment and always have harmful effects. Reduce physical stresses. So as I had explained, maintain proper posture, keep your head up, keep your shoulders back and always have that good curve in the lower back. Make sure you take all articles out of your back pockets. This is especially true for men when you're sitting, take out your wallet, your keys, a handkerchief. Don't put it back there because it acts like a lift. It can actually throw off your hips and your spine is stressed much more. So when you're sitting down, make sure you take all articles out of your back pockets. Wear flat shoes with a one inch heel or less. Ladies, many of you wear heels that are very high, these three and a half, four, five inch heeled shoes. You know, I'm not a fashion consultant. You know, I'm an expert in spinal ergonomics. And I can tell you that when you jack up the heel much higher than nature intended it to go, there is always a price that you pay for it. Uh, podiatrists will tell you the dangers that that poses on the alignment of your feet. And truthfully, wherever your feet goes, your spine goes. So if your feet go out of alignment, your spine will go out of alignment. And you know we have corrective orthotics that we can make to help balance the alignment of the feet, especially for people who have foot problems that are impacting the back. But you know what? Just wear shoes that fit your body better and support better spinal alignment. It puts less stress on your body and it'll save you a lot of money and a lot of unnecessary care if you wear flat shoes that support your body better. Ladies, carry a small clutch bag. Give up the large uh, shoulder bag. You know, kids carry heavy backpacks. I'm a certified Backpack Safety America expert in backpack ergonomics. If you have a child that carries a heavy backpack, you're welcome to come in with that backpack, consult with me, and at no charge, and no obligation, we can weigh the pack. I can show your child how to carry that backpack the right way and how to fit it to them so that if they're gonna carry that backpack, it's gonna produce as little stress as possible on their back. The rule of thumb is 15% of the child's body weight should be taken off. And for those of you who carry a backpack, uh, you know, with uh, a laptop in it and other materials for work, samples and things like that. Try not to carry anything that's more than 15% of your body weight. That's the general rule of thumb. It's especially harmful in children because their spines are growing and developing. And as the twig is bent, that's how the tree grows. So give up the large shoulder bag, especially you know with one strap that hangs on one side. 
you know, whether the shoulder bag is hanging from a strap or you're holding it under the arm. Some people tell me, well, I'm not putting it on my shoulder, doc. I'm carrying it under my arm, but it's still straining the muscles. It's putting a lot of stress on one side of your body and it's interfering with proper alignment of your spine. If you're gonna participate in sports, you know, participate in sports with which work best with your muscles and spine with minimal trauma. I happen to like sports that involve swimming or brisk walking or bicycling and crossfit country, you know, cross country skiing are, are really good during the winter time. Um, I just recorded a walk with the doc that, uh, that the, that's airing on YouTube and uh, it's on the library's portal. You know, if you're walking in the park, you can take that walk with the doc and we have a lot of tips on there too. And it was filmed right over at Great Oak Park in East Brunswick. If you're getting out of bed in the morning, turn on your side first, swing your legs off the bed and use your arms to push yourself up into a sitting position. It's less stressful to the spine and helps get your body in better alignment before you go downstairs and start working. Um, and as long as we're talking about being in bed, sleep on your back without a pillow if possible. If you have to sleep with a pillow, you want to sleep with the pillow so it supports your head and shoulders. Now, some of us read or watch TV in bed, and I've got a sample pillow here. The one thing you don't want to do is put the pillow underneath your head this way, because look, look what it's doing. It's forcing my head forward, and it's just destroying the curve in my neck. You want to put the pillow lower down so it's under my shoulders and my head this way, raising me up a little bit. You know, if you tend to snore, if you have cardiopulmonary issues, uh, you, you may wanna elevate yourself a little bit, but don't put it, don't put the wedge or the pillow under your head. You wanna put it under your shoulders and head so that there's no stress on the neck and causing problems. That's how people wake up with neck pain and numbness and tingling in their arms or hands or other problems related to the neck. Uh, so uh, and if you sleep on your side, Okay, sleep with a pillow that perfectly fits between the side of your head and your shoulders. Okay, if the pillow is too thick, it's gonna force your head to one side and strain your neck. A pillow that's too thin is gonna do just the opposite effect. Your head's gonna go closer to the bed and it's gonna strain your neck and irritate nerves. So just the right amount of space to take up the room so that your head is properly supported on your side. And if you sleep on your stomach, then you want to sleep not in the middle of the pillow. You want to sleep on the edge of the pillow. So your head's turned at a 45 instead of a 90 degree angle. Okay. Don't read or watch TV in bed, especially with your head at a propped or a strained angle. You know, people sit more upright with pillows, you know, stacked behind them when they're reading or watching TV. But as they get tired and the shows keep going on, they do what I call the 11 o'clock slide. And before you know it, their head is being forced down and then they fall asleep. And before you know it, they have problems. So the best thing to do is sit upright in a chair or on the sofa. And then when you feel yourself starting to get drowsy, you know what, that's time to go to bed. You need your rest, get, turn the TV off and get some sleep and get a good night's sleep. While you're sitting, cross your legs at the ankles, not at the knees. If you cross your legs at the knees, you may obstruct circulation and it helps protect the alignment of your lower back uh, while also improving circulation to the legs. Fopper, follow proper bending and lifting procedures. If you drop something off your desk, turn your body, keep your nose between your toes when you bend to pick something up, okay? If you're standing up and you're bending, bend with your knees if you please, okay? So nose between your toes, bend with your knees if you please, and that helps protect the spine and prevents you from bending in ways that'll do more damage. And avoid any position that recreates your pain. Again, pain is a warning signal, it protects you. And that's again why painkillers, muscle relaxants and anti-inflammatories, while they make you a lot more comfortable, can do a lot more damage in the process. And then you'll be even more uncomfortable. Uh, so there are some ways that you could reduce physical stress. Avoid chemical stress. Clean up your diet, you know, eliminate uh, processed foods, take a good multivitamin, watch your intake of sugar, 
especially these days, because it's important, as I said, to have a healthy immune system. You want to be strong against COVID-19 or any other bugs that are out there that intend to do us harm. Sugar is one of the biggest offenders to your body's immune competence. Five grams of sugar will reduce your immune competence 50% up to five hours. And that sugar in all of its forms, that's honey, agave, brown sugar, white sugar, stay away from it completely. And artificial sweeteners are also highly inflammatory. So aspartame, NutraSweet, uh, sorbitol, you know, the things that are found in diet drinks and uh, diet foods are also extremely toxic to the body and very harmful. So I would recommend that if you're gonna be sweetening, use stevia. You can get it in liquid form or powdered form. You can bake with it, cook with it, uh, and put it in beverages. And stevia has no glycemic load and it's not inflammatory and it's zero calories. So it's good for you. Read labels of foods. If you can't pronounce it, it's probably not good for you. Okay, that's the, that's the good rule of thumb. Read labels, avoid things that have sugar disguised, high fructose corn syrup, artificial ingredients, and so on. Um, watch your intake of recreational and therapeutic drugs for obvious reasons, okay? And then the third area that I wanna discuss on stress reduction is reducing mental and emotional stress. Now, one of the best things you could do is get a good night's sleep, okay? And your bed is very important. Chances are, if you've got a mattress that's more than seven years old or you're waking up uncomfortable in the morning, you wanna look at what you're sleeping on and possibly get a, a, new, a new mattress to sleep on. Um, write positive affirmations, read them every morning and every evening. Uh, we tend to bring about what we think about and good positive healthy self-talk is so important, especially these days when we're spending so much time with ourselves. So if you're gonna be with yourself most of the time, be your own best friend and tell yourself good things. You know, we can all pick on ourselves for the things that we know we could improve on, but let's acknowledge the blessings that are in our life, the things that we do well. And if you wanna set goals for yourself, set goals that involve you doing 100 things 1% better instead of one thing 100% better. It's easier to accomplish, it feels better at the end of the day, and you know, you're taking incremental steps towards improving your life and, and the people around you. Have written goals with time frames and action steps attached to them. Read them every morning and every evening. Visualize your accomplishment of those goals, you know, creating the lifestyle of your dreams. Follow an exercise and a stretching program. Get outside. East Brunswick has beautiful parks. You know, enjoy nature uh, and you know. Be around people that you love and love you and help and support you, okay? Now, if you have an injury or you're sore, the best thing to do is to apply ice on an acute injury. Ice is nice, hot is not, okay? And the rule of thumb is in the lower back, apply ice for 20 minutes on, then give it a break for an hour and then reapply 20 minutes on. You could do it each waking hour. Put it over a, a thin article of clothing. Do not put ice directly on the skin. You can actually freeze your skin doing that. You don't want to do that. So have something to insulate you, like a t-shirt or something like that. 20 minutes on and then an hour off. In the mid-back, 15 minutes on. In the, in the neck, about 10 minutes on. And then the hour break and so on. Uh, in the knees, in the hips, elbows, wrists, anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes, depending upon how close the joint is to the skin. So in the wrist or hand, joints are very close to the skin. In the hip, it's very deep. So I might go with less time on the wrist, about 10 minutes, more time on the hip, about 20 minutes, and so on. But what you could also do is if your neck is stiff, especially from staring at a computer screen, what I like to do is I roll a towel like this and you can lie on the floor with your knees bent and just rest with your head back over the towel this way for up to 10 minutes, not more than 10 minutes. Now, if you feel headache or dizziness, discontinue this immediately. But lying on the towel helps to stretch the neck vertebrae out, helps to stretch the, stretch the neck muscles. It helps relieve pressure off of the discs and off the nerves. And 
it's a great way to have some chiropractic first aid and keep your spine in better alignment in between chiropractic visits. I recommend this to my patients. If you want something a little bit fancier, then you could actually get something like this, which can be used and you can lie on it this way. And it's specifically designed to support the upper back and neck and the head acts as a fulcrum, pulls the neck over the fulcrum and uh, it helps keep the neck in better alignment. And I have them in my office for my patients who could benefit from that type of uh, support. But you know, you could use a roll towel and be able to do it, or you could pick something like this up. Make time for wellness or you'll make time for illness. You know, sickness, illness, disease, and health are not events, they're processes. And there are things that we could do to be able to help ensure that we are following the process that meets our life goals and supports the people around us. So eating right, you know, uh, as we had discussed before, taking a good multivitamin, multimineral, and uh, not carrying around excess weight on your body, you know, get some excess weight off. We talk about the COVID-19, the 19 pounds that people gained being so close to the refrigerator at home or stress eating as a result of the changes that we've had to deal with in our lives. Uh, have a spinal checkup. If you haven't had one or it's been a while, it's a good idea to get in and make sure that your power lines are left open so your body's firing on all eight cylinders. That way you'll have less chance of injuring yourself you'll be able to withstand the effects of the stresses that you're under on a regular basis, and you'll be able to keep your body functioning at peak capacity. And there's no better time to have chiropractic care than when you're first born. My kids were checked in the delivery room before my wife held them because the, of the obstetrical manipulation that causes the spine to go out of alignment during the birth process. It's a normal, natural thing. But then kids are learning how to walk and falling down their spines go out of alignment, they, you know, they carry backpacks, they sit in crummy chairs in school or at home, uh, they horse around with other kids, they play sports, they eat garbage when we're not looking. And all of these stresses can wreak havoc on a growing and developing body. So periodic checkups for children are really great, especially by the time they get to be our age and then they have to work from home. So I wanna thank you for all of your time and your attention today. I hope you found the information that I gave you of value. And I'm gonna encourage you to share it with others. Uh, a smart person once said that a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. So thanks for caring and thanks for sharing this information with others. Uh, and for those of you who may have some questions that are personal, I really uh, am not permitted to give out personal information in this webinar, but I would invite you to be able to contact me. Here is my contact information. You can feel welcome to give me a call. There is never a charge to come into my office and meet with me or meet with me virtually uh, to have a consult. There's no obligation whatsoever, and I'll be happy to discuss your health goals and concerns. So thanks again, everybody, and uh, I appreciate it. And once again, thank you to the East Brunswick Library and Kathy Chern for setting this up. Thanks a lot, Dr. Friedman. So um, if anyone has any questions at this point, uh, please type them into the chat box. And as a reminder, uh, Dr. Friedman will not be able to offer personal healthcare advice. So right now we're just seeing a lot of thank yous in the chat box for you, Dr. Friedman. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see some familiar faces on this webinar. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. So it doesn't look like there are any questions, just a lot of thank yous, you did a great job. Thank you. Well, I guess if that's it, Kathy, mm -hmm. we might as well sign off. Yep, so I wanna just say thank you to everyone who attended and take care and stay safe. Be well, everybody. All right, thank you.